And it was so romantic because right after we got married, I was like, I'm gonna take you to the airport now and you're gonna go home. <laughs> she was like, it's so romantic. It's our secret, don't tell anyone. I remember we said, don't tell anyone that we're married. Okay, it's our secret. <laughs> Said that's romantic? But we were married. I didn't tell my parents, I didn't tell my brother, but I remember walking back to the bus and my manager is standing outside of that bus and he's looking at me like. I'm married, Paul. Yes, you are. Get in the fucking bus. <laughs> I thought I loved her. It was awesome. But I toured and I toured and I come to find out is like this whole Blue October thing was not really in the cards for her. You know, she was like, if you love me, you'll quit the band. I was like, I do love you. Then quit the band. Like, well, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't know if I love you that much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love you, don't leave me. Please. <clears throat> I remember it went on for a while and then it began to, we started fighting, we started fighting every time I talked. And then every time I talked, it would turn into, well, I'm getting a divorce lawyer. Well, so am I, but I love you, I love you too, and don't leave me, I've got a divorce lawyer. It was just weird, it was weird. And I remember one day in Canada, I'm standing outside with a bottle of Jack Daniels. I'm looking out at the Northern Lights, because they're beautiful. <laughs> And I'm thinking, I'm going to leave her because she's mean. <laughs> I deserve better. I'm putting my foot down. Oh, oh shit. What? I'm pregnant. <gasps> what? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I can't. I'm just in fucking, no, no, wait. And life changed like that. Not for me, because I still party my ass off. But for her, because she was pregnant. She lived in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I moved there, you know? We didn't get along, so I lived for five months in an Akato, Akato lodge, you know? And I remember the day that that baby came, because I was sitting at the bar, drunk, and my phone rang. The baby's coming, get your ass here. And I looked at the bartender and I said, do you have a shovel? Let's go. And I remember hauling ass through the lights, running red lights, getting to the airport on time, and I show up, they put me in scrubs, and I walk in the room, I'm like. And an hour and a half later, People ask me all the time, what was it like having your first girl? I said, that's easy. It was like having a first, a million first crushes hit you in the face. Bam! And you go, give me another one, give me another one. <laughs> I hold this baby girl in my hands. And I looked at her mama and I said, we gotta work this out. So I said, I'm stopping Blue October for a little bit. I'm going to be a dad. So I went home, right? And this baby was so precious to me. Oh my God. I dressed her in all these little outfits. And I found like this purpose just came down from the sky and went, and wrapped, I became a father. I loved it so much that every time she'd go to the bathroom, like she'd poop and be like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I would paint her room pink and white, like a candy striped store from the 50s, right? 
And every time she would go to the bathroom, go potty. Every time I'd change her diaper, I would light candles. I swear to God. I would light candles and I would play Mendelssohn or, or Mozart or Beethoven. And I just remember looking down and changing her diaper and her big brown eyes looking up at me. And her smiling and I'm like, you love me? You love me? You love me? 